Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this webinar this morning. Uh, my name is Abhishek Kalra. I look after the application consultancy and tech operations uh, for the 3D printing business here at Altim. Uh, this morning, we decided to do this webinar, or rather, I must say, we are initiating a series of webinars uh, in order to explain to uh, some of the people that what are the various applications of the technology across various industries and across various disciplines. Uh, we've seen that uh, there's a lot of awareness about uh, 3D printing as a technology. Almost everybody and anybody that you ask about this technology, everybody knows about it. But we see a lot of lack of understanding about the technology. So by this series of webinars, we aim to increase that understanding and show people how the technology is helping different sorts of people, different sorts of industries across various domains and various applications. Today's webinar, uh, which is titled Trends and Applications in Additive Manufacturing, will be an entry point uh, into the vast variety of things that 3D printing can address. Uh, we will today talk about some of the key technologies that exist in the 3D printing scope, uh, why people are moving from traditional manufacturing and prototyping methods into 3D printing, and uh, some of the work that uh, our customers, Indian customers as well as global customers are doing around the technology. The next webinar that we aim to do will deep dive more into advanced applications and how different materials are used to realize different applications. We will then do a webinar on uh, one of our more flagship technologies which is Polyjet which is one of the only technologies in the world that can uh, produce multi-color, multi-material parts which is playing a key role in the styling uh, activities in various companies who are using prototyping not just for form and fit application but also for product realism, product styling applications and then to conclude it all we will do a webinar over metal additive manufacturing. So these four webinars will happen uh, across a period of next uh, uh, few weeks and we will update to you uh, as and when we launch the webinar. Uh, uh, you are more than welcome to ask any of the questions that you have during the presentation, you can write them down on the chat window on your left uh, or we can address them after we finish the webinar. I have also listed down my email ID. So even after the webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, we will also be publishing out a recording of this webinar very, very soon. So uh, if you want to run back uh, uh, the webinar and just in case you missed anything, uh, you are more than welcome to do that. So before we deep dive, I'd like to introduce a little bit about us. Uh, uh, some of you, as, as I'm seeing, are our customers, uh, but still, uh, we call ourselves as a 3D innovation platform company. We started in 2010 uh, as a very small company. Today, we have offices in across seven, eight locations in the country. And what we aim to do with our products and with our portfolio is to try and solve a customer's most amount, if not all, amount of manufacturing related problems. So over the with this regard, we have global, we have alliances with some of the top OEMs of the world in the CAD CAM world, starting from Dassault Systems, which to which we are gold partners. So we are gold partners for their Katia suit, Delmia suit, 3D experience platform. Dassault is a very famous name in the CAD world uh, through its flagship product, Katia. We are partners with a US based organization called MSC Software. Uh, you may have heard of softwares like Nastran, Patran, Adams. Uh, so we do the simulation suit for MSE. At the core or the heart of our products is additive manufacturing and we represent two, uh, two of the top global OEMs uh, in AM uh, Stratasys which is the company headquartered out of US and Israel for plastics, uh, additive manufacturing, uh, getting into composites, getting into metals and um, SLM solutions, uh, a direct metal laser melting a selective laser melting uh, machine manufacturer from Germany. We are also partners with uh, a Luxembourg based organization called Artec 3D, which uh, produces uh, handheld high uh, to medium accuracy 3D scanners. A lot, of, a lot of time we get queries from our customers who are trying to refurbish parts, whether it be end use components or tools in industries like aerospace, automotive, uh, ships, etc., where CAD data for remanufacturing or repair operations is not available. So 3D scanners come in very handy uh, with respect to recreating CAD from objects. And to complete the loop, we are partners with uh, an Italian optimization uh, uh, company called Estico with a product called Mode Frontier, which helps you to optimize uh, 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 your parts uh, for manufacturing. 
as well as conduct design of experiments. In the past eight years that we have been in operation, uh, we have been privileged uh, to be facilitated by uh, the government as well as some of the private uh, agencies. So last year we were awarded by Frost & Sullivan as the most innovative 3D printing company of India and we have also won the India Small Giants Award in 2015 as well as we were in the top 100 SME companies of India. Uh, so that's a little bit about ourselves. Uh, a little bit about our customers which we take a lot of pride in so as you can see on your screen we have customers right from education and research uh, some of the top uh, names in the countries uh, IIT Bombay, VIT, Amrita, uh, National Institute of Technology etc etc are our customers moving to aerospace and defense um, which have been one of the early adopters of 3D printing so we have names like ISRO, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, Team Indus uh, Airbus, UTC Aerosystems, etc. to automotive OEMs as you can see on the bottom right corner Ford, Ashok Leyland, Hyundai, John Deere and uh, uh, healthcare companies uh, other uh, non-manufacturing companies per se uh, such as Intel or uh, Forbes are our customers uh, so we uh, have close to 250 plus customers over various products and today we will share some of the work that our customers have done using uh, our systems uh, and our technology. But before we get into that, uh, I saw this uh, image uh, and I clicked this image in Delhi a couple of months back uh, where I saw this coding uh, all across Delhi which says 3D printers are reprinting the future or are they? This kept me wondering, uh, I've been in the industry for about five years now, uh, if you ask an average person on the street does he know about 3d printing most likely the answer would be yes so there's a lot of awareness but if you ask an average person on the street whether he knows how 3d printers are 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 making his life better his or her life better most likely that answer will be not sure so that's the topic that we want to address today so that how a 3d printing sitting inside a facility in general electric or a facility in a shokle land is actually affecting the average person on the street so with that thought let me begin uh, moving on just for the people who are new to the subject or new to the topic what is 3d printing so 3d printing first is a manufacturing technology right the purpose of 3d printing is to build physical parts and different sorts of materials uh, it is more often also known as a direct digital manufacturing platform because it prints or it produces parts directly from digital CAD data how the process starts is that you design something in CAD or you get an output from a 3D scanner. Uh, the software of the 3D printer will slice the parts into various tiny layers and each of these layers will be deposited in the form of a material on the printer layer by layer. So what we are doing essentially is we are growing the part uh, layer by layer. Now another term that we very commonly hear in the industry and it's most uh, often uh, re interchangeably used with 3D printing is additive manufacturing. But if it's the same thing, then why use two terms? So I'd just also like to clear the subject out. So like any other process in the world, whether it be manufacturing process or non-manufacturing process, uh, 3D printing is us, uh, which has a lot of, uh, any process in the world which has a lot of uh, sub-processes or sub-routines within it, such similarly additive manufacturing is more an umbrella process and 3D printing is a part of that process. To give you an analogy, uh, let's take Mona Lisa as a painting. So when Leonardo da Vinci decided to uh, paint Mona Lisa, only taking a brush and scribbling something on a canvas does, did not did, will would not have defined the popularity and success of that painting. He had to choose the right model in that case, uh, Mona Lisa, the right colors, the right canvas, the right lighting conditions, the right pose, the most famously the right smile. And by the culmination of all these processes was created a masterpiece. Similarly, additive manufacturing is a chain of processes which starts with design. And of course, design is, is the most critical part of it. But then with 3D printing or with additive manufacturing, we say that geometry is not a restriction. Any design that you can imagine of, you can dream of, you can, pr you can produce via 3D printing, which may or may not be the case in traditional manufacturing, which is full of a lot of constraints. So design optimization is coming up as a very, very big uh, aspect in the use of 3D printing as a technology. Uh, optimization methods have come up with our both which are uh, driven to create better parts which 
are more cost effective and more functional. So design optimization is a key thing. Now, if I take about seven or eight years ago, uh, while 3D printing was still evolving, a lot of people wanted to use 3D printed parts as an end use application parts, but were never sure whether the part will survive the life of the components. Let's say uh, this part in action is a, is a component that fits into the engine of an aircraft. If General Electric has to put this part in, 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 the, in the aircraft, uh, irrespective of whether they can make it or not, they, they, they must test it uh, before they deploy it on the aircraft. Since additive is, is still a gray area in terms of st part strengths a little bit, a lot of simulations and analysis techniques have come up which enable to, to simulate the performance of the 3D printed part while in live action. Then of course is the heart of the process which is the actual 3D printing. Here also the, 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 the selection of the right technology or a combination of technologies and the right material or a combination of materials define the success or failure of the part. So for example you cannot build an engine component with a thermoplastic material. You need some sort of metal, titanium or aluminium or whatever. On the other end of the spectrum it is not justified to make a titanium uh, prototype for a form application. So the selection of right material and right technology is very very critical. Then comes another step which is which is somewhat ignored when we talk about the technology in general which is post processing. Sometimes hybrid manufacturing helps that you produce some parts out of conventional methods in some portion of the part using 3D printing and then club the both to form a better product together. So in a nutshell the correct design techniques fit for application materials, printing processes and pre and post processes define the success or failure of the job. Right. Big example of this uh, is a fuel, uh, leap fuel nozzle developed by General Electric. Uh, so you're seeing the part on the top of the screen. Uh, the part was, invention was conventionally when they were manufacturing it was a combination or an assembly of 20 parts which was converted into a single part job because additive manufacturing has the ability to create complex and unibody geometries. The part is 25% lighter, uh, which is a huge, uh, huge amount of saving for the aerospace industry. For those of you who don't know, it would cost approximately $10,000 to put one kg extra into the air. So that is the kind of impact that we are talking about. So when we say is 3D printing revolutionizing the future, Activities like these, which are making our planes more safer or, or cutting down the fuel costs is actually what is affecting an average Joe on the street to, uh, to uh, in terms of uh, making his life better with additive manufacturing. The product is claimed to be approximately five times more durable and almost 30,000 parts have already been produced and shipped. And the component has also gained FAA approval to be, f to be used as a fit to fly part in an aircraft. So these are the kind of things that are happening on the tip of the iceberg spectrum. Uh, moving on, why are companies moving to additive? If I recall correctly, CNC or other sorts of low volume manufacturing methods were developed in the early 1930s or early 1940s, whereas additive as a technology only came across in the 1980s. And still some people say that it's not as mature as CNC. So then why are companies moving to additive? Principally because of three reasons. First, as you can see on your screen, it's a digital platform. With the, with the advancements in IoT technologies and uh, concepts of Industry 4.0 and smart factories coming up, it is very critical that companies are adopt, to adopt a digital tool to digitalize and revolutionize their manufacturing processes. Many companies, including some of our Indian customers, are, including some of you who are joining the webinar, have uh, R&D centers in India as well as other parts of the world. So a digital platform which un allows global collaboration makes product development very very easy or at least some level of easy and reduces the elimination of risk. Uh, also a new, very interesting concept is coming up which is of virtual inventory. There is no need to stock spare parts anymore. Uh, of course volume plays a role here but a lot of our customers are uh, eliminating inventories and just keeping digital files and producing them on demand with 3D printing which was somewhat not possible with traditional manufacturing processes and the most an important aspect of the technology is the fact that it's easy 3D printing or at least the printing part of it is more or less much 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 more easier than any of its traditional uh, manufacturing counterparts and you get utmost geometric freedom so 
when we were in when we were in school when we were in college we were always taught how to design as per constraints of the manufacturing but with the advancements in 3d printing technology and the fact that it's a complexity free process you can design whatever you feel like without worrying of worrying about whether the manufacturing technology can produce it or not because it can and focus more on how to make the part more efficient a result of this uh, just a little bit on the market statistics in 2017 this is a little old data uh, 3d printing printing was capped at about a 7 and a half billion dollar market and 90% of the companies that have used 3d printing consider it to be a competitive advantage we have a lot of customers of ours who are doing great things with 3d printing but they are not willing to publish their work because they feel it's an asset that they have developed in making themselves more competitive as well as better than their own competition uh, another big reason of this happening is yesterday it was a buyer's market a seller's market today it's a buyer's market today uh, when i was for example buying a car uh, last year i wanted a car in a particular color and the dealer that i was dealing with did not have that color so it was very easy for me to walk into another showroom and pick up the car from there uh, which was not the case maybe 15 years ago or 20 years ago so companies are realizing the potential uh, and damage that competition can cause them are find and are finding easy ways to do product development to cut down product development times so that they are faster in the market and you'll see a very good example from an indian customer uh, in the next few slides to come which uh, where they've actually seen a tremendous tremendous amount of uh, lead time reduction by using of uh, 3d printing technologies uh so where it is used uh typically when we say 3d printing uh, we often consider it or most often consider it as a prototyping technology uh, we say 3d printing is only and only used for prototyping which sort of has been true in the past so uh but now the scope is changing uh, things are moving away from prototyping so prototyping is a big technology of course uh next we come to tooling which is a very interesting application that has emerged in the past couple of years uh with customers who initially started with uh, prototyping are moving to tooling so tooling i can sub categorize into two components first is tooling to produce an induced component for example some of our customers are printing uh, casting patterns in in uh, uh in in abs plastic using a stratasys machine and then burning them out in investment casting process to create metal parts so where you do not have some material or some technology available there is an indirect tooling method that could give you that part and the second is tooling for manufacturing uh, shop floors that is jigs fixtures inspection gauges which we will talk about uh, a little in some time to come and the third uh, which is uh, still a far uh, long way to go but we are getting there is rapid manufacturing so production of uh, parts that are directly picked up from 3d printer and used uh with or without processing as uh, depending upon the application uh rapid manufacturing of course although we saw the ge example in the in the more generic world is not used for very very high volumes but it's making a lot of impact in the high value high complexity low volume range so if we talk uh, if i have to split the market size a little bit out of that 7 billion 7 1/2 billion dollars that we saw prototyping is one of the biggest applications still more than 50% of the work happening in 3d printing is happening in and around prototyping tooling is about 10% manufacturing is still less than 1% manufacturing being a 13 trillion dollar industry worldwide uh, but we are slowly seeing this graph moving uh, within within prototyping also 10 years ago when 3d printing was new or was 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 new to the average designer in a in, in a company 3D printing was only used for form applic form uh, visualization application. So you have two parts that fit together. You produce both of them on the 3D printer. You you check the form. You check the fit, and then you follow the conventional methods to do the rest of the job. However, today with the advancement of technologies, uh, rapid prototyping is moving from just design validation to complete product realism. As you can see on the top of the screen. uh this audi uh, tail light was printed using a polyjet system uh, which can produce multi color multi material parts so customers now have uh the means or the resources to produce parts which look exactly the same as what they intend their end use part to be so a lot of styling companies in various automotive uh, establishments and even consumer goods are adopting this kind of uh, uh technologies to produce uh, realistic prototypes which 
uh, which ensures that form fit function as well as realism can be realized from the same prototype another example of an helmet uh, uh, below that uh, if i talk about rapid tooling uh, you see an example of uh, uh, an assembly fixture on the top and a cmm jig in the bottom uh, which if you have to produce traditionally would be an assembly of multiple parts will be made out of metal so uh, a lot a lot of time will go into machining those parts separately uh, they are not ergonomic they are heavy so rapid tooling especially with respect to jigs and fixtures has proved a lot of value in cutting down the weight of the component and hence making it more ergonomic efficient and safe to handle and also increasing line efficiencies uh, since uh, the technology is more or less a tool less and a labor less process so the example that you see is from BMW a traditional emblem fixture that used to weigh around 4 kg and the weight was reduced to just under 1 kg so for a guy who has to pick up this fixture every couple of minutes for 8 hours a day 3 shifts a uh, uh, eight, 8 8 hours a day 7 days a week that's a lot of a uh, lot of ad efficiency added to his process which will also make the line move faster we have a couple of more examples around this subject and then rapid manufacturing we are seeing two very contrasting examples on the screen uh, the top one uh, being from Daitsu which allows its customers to make custom skins for the parts uh, for, for the cars so the, the customer can go to Daitsu's website choose a skin Daitsu will print the component paint it and fit it on the screen uh, fit, it, fit it on the body of the car our uh, counterparts in Shanghai have picked up a similar project for uh, BMW on the bottom end of the screen, screen are you, seeing, you are seeing a metal additive manufacturing example to repair a gas turbine shroud, uh, which traditionally would be a would be a lot of expensive activity, but with respect to metal three part with the incoming of metal three D printing has become very easy and very cost effective to do. Uh, moving further, uh, just quantify a little bit on this subject. So. Uh, uh, Typically, when customers move to to a new technology, they want a few quantitative outputs out of it, whether it be in terms of cost saving, time saving, effort saving, etc. So here we see an example of uh, direct cost saving, where Airbus conducted a, a research case study. I hope to see this in aircrafts very soon, and you can observe next time you are on a on a plane that the air the seat belt buckle of the of of the seat uh, uh, is very heavy. So Airbus did an optimized design uh, which could be only manufactured via 3D printing because of the complexity free nature of the process was able to save about 50% of the component weight from about 120, 130 grams to about 60 to 70 grams which over the life of an aircraft let's say A350 or an A380 would save 3 million dollars in fuel as I told you every kilogram flown into the air costs 10,000 odd dollars in fuel so this is a very very massive uh, example of uh, massive cost savings done by adoption, a correct adoption of additive manufacturing, uh, enhancing efficiency. Uh, a big, big uh, thing that is happening in the world of uh, 3D printing, uh, uh, metal 3D printing specifically, and those of you who come from the molding industry would uh, correlate to this, is that the cooling time in an injection molding cycle is the most critical and the most time consuming part of the process. By the help of 3D printing, you can create uh, tooling inserts with conformal cooling channel which makes the cooling path more efficient, reduces the cooling time uh, and uh, reduces the risk of failure in terms of part warpages. So here we are saving, increasing the tool life, hence we are enhancing efficiency. I already told you about the lightweight ergonomic fixtures which are making assembly lines safer as well as increasing the line output and efficiency. And of course, just in time manufacturing. I was speaking to a customer of mine uh, who says that his OEM uh, is uh, forcing him to keep tools, injection mold tools and spare parts for a period of 15 years. And it's costing him a lot of money and effort to maintain that storage or warehousing facility. So uh, a method that he's adopting is a culmination of the conformal cooling approach as well as the digitization approach where he desires to scan keep the CAD data of the tool and produce it on demand via metal 3d printing as and when and if required uh, so this is just a little bit quantify on how things are moving and how the advantages of additive manufacturing are are really really helping the industries uh, moving further 
so a little bit about us again we have principally two alliances as i told you in the beginning of the presentation uh, with 3d printing uh, 3d printing giants or OE, uh, global oems in the world first one being stratasys stratasys is uh, is the world's leader manufacturer of polymer or plastic based 3d printing with its two flagship technologies called fdm and polyjet uh, we have over 30 leadership awards uh, over 800 patents uh, with respect to uh, polymer uh, 3D printing and uh, as per the Wohler's report, most of the industrial 3D printers sold in the world, 51% in 2015, this figure has changed a little bit in the past three years, come from Stratasys. On the other end of the spectrum, on the metal front, we have solutions from SLM, uh, selective laser melting solutions from SLM Solutions Germany, uh, who are also a pioneer in the field of metal 3D printing. Uh, Together we have total three technologies in the in the domain. First is fuse deposition modeling. I'm I'm sure many of you would have heard about fuse deposition modeling. I can see some of our customers who are FDM customers also attending uh, the program uh, the session. So fuse deposition modeling essentially works with thermoplastic filaments. These are real plastics that you use into your day-to-day -day, uh, act manufacturing activities, uh, which come in the form of a filament that are printed by the printer. So the purpose of FDM is to create strong functional parts that can be used for rough and tough high stress applications. But as I told you that the scope of uh, uh, 3D printing is changing just from the strength aspect of it into the product realism part of it. So for that we have a technology called Polyjet. Polyjet is essentially uh, similar to an inkjet uh, 2D printer which uses a liquid resin uh, synthesized plastic uh, or elastomeric material which is jet through a set of nozzles and cured using a UV light as you can see the animation on your screen. Uh, some of our high-end uh, polyjet machines which is the Connex and the J750 platform and I will do a specific webinar on applications in styling and product realism using polyjet uh, in, in, the, in the coming few weeks. These machines can produce multi-color, multi-material parts by mixing up to six materials together. So in the same part, you can create transparency, you can create color, you can create uh, rubber-like components uh, and a lot. So total approximately five lakh combinations or 500,000 combinations can be produced in the same parts. Uh, moving further, uh, as we told of our alliance in metal, so selective laser melting is a, process, is a powder bed fusion process. So like FDM uses a filament or a wire of material of thermoplastic, Polyjet uses liquid resin synthesized plastic. SLM technology uses uh, 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 metal in the form of a powder, uh, which is spread. Uh, I'll play this video for you to understand. So as you can see, uh, as you as you can see on your screen, a, a roller spreads a thin layer of powder on a platform, and then a single laser or a set of laser will hit that powder as per the profile of your CAD and melt the uh, the powder selectively thus layer by layer forming the part. Uh, so there's a lot of advantages of metal 3D printing and a lot of boom happening in the world of metal 3D printing especially in the terms of end use parts and high stress components and optimization. Uh, we will also do a specific webinar on this but uh, just to introduce the three technologies. Now I'll show you some industry examples and then wake up, we can take up some questions. So before we move uh, into specific examples, I'd like to show you a few which I call as the tip of the iceberg examples. So these are some, some cases where our customers have been able to do exemplary work uh, and how uh, we or Stratasys or SLM have helped them do it. So uh, starting with uh, back in 2014, uh, as you can see from the news article, uh, we uh, Stratasys did a project with NASA where uh, the part that you see on the screen is actually a part that goes on the exterior of a satellite and houses uh, some radar components. Traditionally produced in, uh, in aqua, swart, aqua quartz using machining, it was very difficult, very cost uh, prohibitive for NASA to do it uh, using a traditional method for the kind of quantities that they wanted to do. So uh, Stratasys and NASA collaborated in using the Ultim material, uh, which is a polyethermide uh, based material. Uh, which is one of the only aerospace material approved material in the world 
produced this part which went on the exterior of the satellite 30 odd parts which went on the exterior of the satellites now before this nobody had even put a polymer part in space even in the interior of a satellite so that's the kind of uh, roots that uh, our oes and we have uh, an extension of that is that uh, stratasys is working with nasa to develop new materials which sort of eliminate some of the post processing things that had to be done uh, in 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 the previous project from ultem so we have pec based materials we have electrostatic dissipative materials which are a great fit for electronics and electrical housing applications both in the interior of a satellite exterior of a satellite as well as commercial or military uh, airplanes uh, coming a little bit to india uh, we say we feel a lot of proud uh, pride in saying that many of the defense customers uh, and aerospace customers in india including hal is our customer uh, in fact they have one of the biggest machine from us which is being extensively used in the development even in use parts of their helicopters isro which is india's uh, space research and satellite organization as you know is uh, using 3d printing to produce uh, functional testing environmental models what could be the scenario on moon and etc and is also approaching towards building parts which will be put into satellites shortly uh, once this is published we will have uh, um more data to share with you but not at the moment uh moving further uh, i'd like to show you a case study which was done very very long back uh, uh, uh the reason i want to show you this case study is because this was one of india's first ever case study on uh published on use of 3d printing in a in a real world environment so jdr as some of you may or may not know is a drdo uh, defense research lab which was involved in the development of jet engines for what was to be the indigenously developed aircraft tejas so this jet engine is an assembly of 2500 components and it was estimated by the scientists at gtre that it would take one year to build a working prototype of this part if uh, we go through a machining process and of course uh, back in 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 those days of uh, before 2010 cad was maybe not as advanced to be able to de- to, to be able to understand the defects that may uh, uh cause in in while assembly or manufacturing so gtre decided to print the prototyping prototype uh, what you see on the screen is actually a fdm 3d printed part uh, which uh, which was produced in just Six weeks, as compared to twelve months that was originally anticipated in machining, we were also able to cut down drastic costs here from a sixty thousand dollar machining coat to a twenty thousand dollar FDM print, and uh, this helped GTRE establish some of the flaws that CAD model was not able to, or CAD visualization was not able to do. So uh, scientists were able to exib- uh, understand the interrelationship between component. and were able to build a a a better engine uh, and were were able to validate uh, their components easily uh, i i the jtr usually displays this prototype at the aero show if so, so if some of you are going to the aero show uh, this year they may display this so you may be able to see uh, which happens in bangalore uh, moving further uh, uh, another big myth with 3d printing especially with respect to polymer 3d printing is that it's only used for form fit and now realism purposes but it cannot be used in environments where uh, a lot of heavy loads or high stresses are falling on the part uh, so uh, and uh, uh, this is a very big myth associated with 3d printing uh, and we feel that with the correct design approach and with the correct material approach the challenge of using a polymer 3d printing part as a replacement to a traditional metal part for a high stress application can be done so the example that you see here is this component which is a ecs duct which gives liquid cooling to the to the hot avionics on in the rocket launch system uh, a project conducted done by a organization called united launch alliance which is a rocket launch uh, vehicle provider so this component actually goes uh, on top of the rocket somewhere here circles around the rocket uh, the challenge with this project was that it was a 140 part assembly as you can see in the image uh, on on in the bottom corner and uh, 
such a large assembly meant high cost of manufacturing high cost of assembly difficulty in assembly and the more the number of components the more risk of failure so the engineers at ULA were able to successfully replicate a metal component which goes in a rocket launch environment with a 3d printed plastic component as you can see the guy is holding in his hand so you can probably anticipate it how light it is and hence how easy to assemble it is so uh, by use of the correct uh, design techniques in design optimization or design modification for 3d printing the the part size was reduced from 140 components to 16 components which you can imagine is uh, such a big uh, big uh, efficiency value they were also able to save by the virtue of this a cost of about 57 percent and you can anticipate amount of temperatures and vibrations that will cause on any component sitting in or around a rocket launch environment so that's kind of breaks the myth that a 3d printed component a plastic 3d printed component cannot be used in high stress applications like these uh, right so there's an interesting video on this on youtube you can just uh, youtube uh, ula stratuses and you'll be able to find this video and see uh, the engineers at ula elaborating their process how they were able to achieve it uh, uh, moving further uh, so now uh, recently uh, 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 was unveiled the statue of unity a statue of sardar vallabhai patel in gujarat which came across a lot of controversy on why the government has put so much money but i'll not get into that so uh, just for you who do not know as i see some people are joining from overseas uh, this is the statue of Liber uh, of unity to give you some example it's the world's tallest statue standing at 182 meters tall uh, it is almost twice as tall as the statue of liberty so now those of you who come or uh, those of you who don't alike from the architectural uh, engineering and construction business would understand wind is a very important factor in uh, in building high rise uh, high rise structures uh, like similar like similar to this so one of our customers uh, a company called rwdi consulting engineers a canadian company also based out of india used stratasys fdm to build a scale down version of uh, this part attach sensors to various positions of the part these little black dots that you see here uh, I'll try and zoom in and show are actually sensors and subjected to a wind tunnel to accurately de determine the effect of wind uh, uh, or, or, or on the actual statue and give constructional inputs to, uh, to the constructing agency to be able to take construction decisions and uh, RWDI, uh, we are very fortunate to say, has a total of three machines, three statuses, the FDM machines from us. And uh, uh, we also exhibited this model in, a, in our statuses user conference that happened uh, a few days back in Bangalore, uh, which, uh, which was a real, real big amazement for many people. It was a, uh, was a really popular uh, uh, model. Uh, and uh, the company's uh, RWDI uh, director, Mr. Prakash, says, that uh, 3D printing and Stratasys really helped them in 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 uh, delivering the project in time. So, uh, just to show you that uh, India uh, as a country uh, and the use of this technology in India is as at par, if not better, with some of the good work happening uh, in and around the globe. Moving further, as I told you about prototyping, moving from just product development to full scale innovation, and I sort of gave uh, the hint of Audi tail light. So this is the actual part. Audi uh, printed this part using a machine uh, from Stratasys called GA750, which can produce five lakh combinations of colors or materials in the same component and put an injection molded tail light as well as a 3D printed tail light side by side in one of their expos. And many people were not able to tell the difference between the 3D printed component and the injection molded component which shows you how how accurate these technologies have got in, in terms of producing uh, near to perfect or almost as perfect components. And uh, th this is the J750 platforms, as you can see, it's a polyjet platform. So styling is a very, very critical component for many automotive companies. We have Honda and Maruti in India who are using uh, some of Stratasys machines for uh, styling based applications. And that red that you see is very, very critical for, for Audi. That that red is is if it's there it's there if it's not there the process is rejected 
so uh, with uh, j750 they were able to get the correct rate uh, anyways i will do a very very detailed webinar on the use of j750 and some of the other polyjet technology is in achieving the real styling uh, moving for the this case study is also available on the internet so you can just google uh, audi stratasys and you can you are able to find a video the video i think is in german but we have subtitles so you can understand what's going on uh, moving further uh, an example from uh, metal 3d printing so as i gave a hint of metal 3d printing being used in the conformal cooling aspect of 3d printing here's one such example from the tire industry okay so if you take a tire mold which is a what a 3 feet uh, uh, diameter part it would take weeks and weeks together to produce the mold with conventional processes subtractive processes uh, like milling or casting but with the help of 3d printing not just we were we able to produce very very intricate features i'll zoom a little bit and show you so approximately 0.05 mm feature um, and this is the 3d printing printed mold as you can see on your screen on the left hand side but we were also able to produce the complete mold in a fashion like this in under 48 hours right so those of you who come from the tooling or in any other manufacturing industry would kind of understand that 48 hours of doing this with this kind of output is a breakthrough so this is the kind of uh, efficiency time and cost saving values that we are talking about uh, when we do a webinar on metal 3d printing i will show you much more examples on this uh, topic uh, tooling example induced part examples and we will see i will see if i can find a video on this and show it to you moving further i think uh, yeah that is the end of my presentation so just to sum it up i would uh, i would like to re emphasize on the point that when the companies use it, use 3d printing they preferably use it for two sorts of approaches first is pre manufacturing where they need a tool which is able to successfully replicate the desired product now this is not just in terms of geometry but in terms in terms of also a function as you can see this manifold printed using a polymer material which is uh, which is the same as the geometry of the desired part but also can bear functional testing loads as well but if the company uses it for end use parts and when i say end use parts i will count jigs and fixtures also into also into this we want design creativity to enhance or exceed design constraints so a lot of these kinds of optimized better geometries which can produce better results uh, exploiting 3d printing's ability to do complex parts will be seen in the future and together as a combination of both is a successful adopt adoption uh, i think with this i come to an end of my presentation i think we are in time thank you so much uh, for joining us today once again you can ask me questions if you want to now or my email id is present we will also be submitting a, uh, uh, a webinar recording on uh, to you and we'll post it on uh, on open platform so that you can see it there uh, thank you so much for your time have a lovely day ahead uh, thank you